Hi, and welcome to Cyberry.it. My name's Anthony, and I'm your local subject matter expert here for Network Plus, and today we're going to be talking about the OSI and TCP IP models. So what is the OSI model? Well, the OSI model is a way of thinking about networks that allows us to divide it into layers. Now, when we're talking about networking, we can think of networking in one overarching idea of sending communications from one point to another point, sending our uh, traffic, our data from one computer to another computer anywhere in the world. That's networking. But networking also divides itself into different layers that in, uh, encompass different aspects of this transportation process. If we just thought of networking as one big overarching process and didn't have a way to break it down into these different layers, it'd be harder to understand what goes on. It'd be harder to understand how the data is transformed, how the data is moved across the network, and how our different sessions are managed and controls, and how our applications actually access the network. So we want to take a look at these different layers. We want to be able to dive into our OSI model, and we want to understand what each of these layers mean and how to understand them. Um, so what does the OSI model do for us? What, what does it really mean? Well, let's compare this to the analogy of uh, shipping a package. Now, if you were to purchase a package online and ask for it to be delivered from the factory over to your house, this entire process is known as shipping. Uh, essentially, you just order something, they box it up, they send it on a truck. There's a lot of smaller processes involved, but we just encompass it in one grand term, term known as shipping. The same thing with our OSI model. Um, we have all of these different processes that go on when we connect from one computer to another. We have all of these different, uh, we have all of these different sub uh, situations, we have all of these different managements and controls, but we just encompass them all in one term known as networking. But if we were to break down our shipping process and then say we have a certain process where we're actually handling the item that we're, we ordered and putting it or taking it out of the box, so we have the item that we ordered and taking it into or putting, uh, taking it out of a box, and then we have another layer of shipping where our box actually is being loaded onto a truck for movement onto the road. And then we have another layer where the truck is actually in transit to our location. And then finally, we have another layer uh, similar to when we're boxing the, truck, the, uh, the box onto the truck. Uh, that same layer is in play when we're taking the box off of the truck. And then we're back to our first layer where we were handling the object when we take it back out. So it's sort of all of these original steps to get the box to us now in reverse. We're taking it back off the truck or we're taking the object out of the box. It's the same thing when we're thinking about the OSI model. The OSI model allows us a way of breaking down that network into these steps that occur not just once, uh, but it'll actually go back the other way when we're breaking it, when we're breaking our objects, when we're breaking our packets back down to a way that we can understand them. So let's do a quick general overview of our OSI model and then talk a little bit about a way that we can remember the order and then we'll go into the exact specifics of each individual layer. Um, so our OSI model is, consists of seven, seven different layers. Our layer one and layer, uh, all the way to layer seven, layer one is going to be our low, what we call our uh, low level layers and our layer seven will be higher, higher level layers. Uh, higher level and lower level meaning, uh, lower level being more basic, uh, root more um, bare bones type of transmission of data, such as uh, on our layer one, we have our physical layer. So that's going to be the actual uh, physical electrical impulses and the cables and the network interface card in our computer, whereas layer seven is going to be at the application level, where our, our computer is managing what applications, what programs are allowed to use network connections, are allowed to talk out over the network. So it's a higher level of computing. It requires uh, a, lot more, uh, a lot more processes occurring in order for this layer seven process to be happening. So we have seven, again, we have seven layers. Our layer one is going to be our physical layer. layer. Again, we mentioned that our physical layer is going to be our cables and our bits. 
Layer two is going to be our data link layer. When we're talking about our data link layer, we're talking about things like uh, Mac sending our Mac address across a network, uh, sending to a switch, or sending frames. Uh, layer three is going to be our network layer. I, when we use IP addressing, when we're sending to uh, points all across the world, or we're sending to data to a router, uh, that would be our layer three level. Layer four is going to be our transport layer. Our transport layer is going to provide us with management and help us to break, into, uh, break up our sessions into packets. Uh, layer five will be our session layer. Our session layer is going to be uh, communication and management of our actual communications sessions, basically dictating who's allowed to talk, how, uh, who's allowed to talk when in order to help keep things a little bit neat and help our uh, communications between our two endpoints go smoother. Then our layer six is going to be our presentation layer. Presentation layer is going to encompass uh, things such as encrypting and decrypting. Uh, it's essentially going to format and prepare our data to be presented to us on screen or in a way we as humans can understand. And then layer seven is our application layer. And our application layer is going to be what allows our programs to connect to our network, what al allows and dictates what, uh, what aspects of our computer and what aspects of our programs are allowed to communicate and are allowed to send data over our network and help to manage that. So we see how we go from a very, again, a very low level, our physical layer, all the way up to our application layer. And we'll, after we talk about our way that we can remember our order here, we'll go into more detail on those individual layers. My favorite way to remember things, especially lists, is going to be uh, having a mnemonic for something. Uh, for our OSI model, there are a couple mnemonics out there. Some of them go layer 1 to layer 7, uh, while there are others that go the opposite way. They go layer 7 to layer 1. Um, I kind of like things going in number sequential order from low at least to greatest, so we're going to do some mnemonics going from layer 1 to la layer 7. Um, we have two mnemonics here, and our mnemonics are going to all need to have P for physical, D for data link, N for network, T for transport, S for session, P again for presentation, and then finally A for application. Uh, our first mnemonic is please do not throw sausage pizza away. A very solid piece of advice now also applied to the OSI, uh, OSI model. And then we have another, which I was told, uh, people do not or don't need to see Paula Abdul. So it depends on your per personal preference. Maybe you do or don't want to see her, but this will help you as well as the sausage pizza piece of advice. Uh, you can use these in order to help you remember the order of the OSI model in case uh, you get, tend to get these words or phrases mixed up a little bit. So uh, using our mnemonic here and then by remembering that our OSI model is a uh, way that we can break up uh, the term networking, the way that we can think about networking into different layers, um, we can understand a little bit better about how our com computers communicate with each other.